All right, uh, we are studying the doctrine of evil. It's evil on the part of the United States government to send its emissaries into other countries unarmed. It is evil not to arm to the teeth every embassy in every part of the world so that no embassy could ever be attacked without at least a thousand people dying in the attack. It is tragic that the American flag no longer means what it used to. But all of that will be changed. And for those of you who are here for the first time and new, your freedom that you enjoy right now is through military victory. Get it? Military. Men, honorable men, have died on battlefields so that you could hold your idiotic views in freedom. And the most honorable services we have are the military and the police. And if you can't figure that out from the Word of God, you're in the wrong pew. Now we're studying the doctrine of evil. And we're studying it on the basis of it coming into a focus in the middle of verse 2. Corrected translation beginning at verse 1. To the messenger, future pastor of the church in Ephesus, write, He, Jesus Christ, who has empowered the seven stars on his right hand. That's pastors who teach Bible doctrine. The one who keeps walking in the middle of the seven golden lampstands, our Lord Jesus Christ, sustaining local churches, communicates these things. I have known your accomplishments, both the strenuous effort and your perseverance as residence and function inside the divine dinosphere. Furthermore, you are not able to tolerate categories of evil. And we are about to finish up our study of evil. We have noted in point one a definition of evil. In point two, the origin of evil. And we studied Satanology last week in that connection. The origin of evil is Satan's revolt against God, and the origin of evil is Satan's genius in devising a system. Then the point three was the system of evil, and we reviewed the two cosmic dinospheres. Cosmic Dynosphere number one, 26 gates of interlocking systems of arrogance, and Cosmic Dynosphere number two, nine gates of interlocking systems of hatred. Number four was the mandate regarding evil, 12, Romans 12, 21, and that gave us the chance this morning to see the two approaches to the Christian way of life under the two Greek nouns, or one's a noun, one's an adjective. Dunamis is the noun. That's D-U-N-A-M-I-S. And dunamis means power, and it refers to the divine dynosphere. And then we looked at the adjective agathos, which is pertinent. A-G-A-T-H-O-S. Agathos is intrinsic good and is used for the plan of God, X plus Y plus Z. For you see, Romans 12, 21 says, Stop being conquered by evil, but conquer evil by means of the good. And so we reviewed under point four the mandate regarding evil. And then in point five, the categories of evil, and we studied motivating and functional evil. Point six, the point which we covered in part this morning, are the biblical principles related to to evil. And in the first principle we know we distinguish between the honorable and the evil, which is a matter of spiritual growth or momentum inside the divine dynosphere. We noted in passing Hebrews five verses thirteen and fourteen. The second principle, the divine dynosphere, is the believer's only real protection against evil. We noted this morning first Corinthians thirteen five. Point, the third principle, the believer in the cosmic system is constantly frustrated by evil. We noted two passages, Romans 7, 19, and 3 John 11. The fourth principle, the laws of divine establishment, or category one truth, is designed to protect the citizens of the client nation from evil. We noted this morning, Romans 13, verses 3 and 4. Then the fifth principle, the domination of good in the client nation, determines historical prosperity. Uh, the domination of evil determines historical judgment. We noted a number of passages such as Proverbs 12, 20, Psalm 34, 16, Isaiah 13, 11, Isaiah chapter 47, verses 10 and 11, Micah chapter 1, verse 12, Amos chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. 
We noted a sixth principle. God protects the believer inside the divine dynosphere from evil. Proverbs 12, 21, Psalm 37, 17, Psalm 91, 10, Psalm 97, 10, Psalm 119, 101, Psalm 121, 7, Psalm Proverbs 133, Proverbs 2, 11 through 13, and we uh, finished up with the seventh principle this morning. Believers are often led into a, the cosmic system by their Christian friends. And we took up 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived, evil companions corrupt good morals, and 2 Thessalonians 3, 2 and 3, that you may be delivered from perverse and evil men, for all believers do not have doctrine. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from evil. Principle number eight, under point six, evil is distinguished from war and disease. A very important concept since war in itself is not evil. It is uh, the evil that often accompanies war that is mistaken uh, and confused and distorted uh, into a relationship with war. War and disease, therefore, are in view here. And our passage is Jeremiah 28, 8. The prophets who were before me and before you from ancient times prophesied against many lands, against great kingdoms, concerning war, concerning evil, concerning disease. Now this verse indicates three different categories. They are not the same. Evil is a category, war is a category, disease is a category. This verse indicates then that evil must be distinguished from war and disease. Sin and evil occur in warfare, sometimes even human good. But war in itself is not evil or sinful. It is the basis for national freedom. And therefore, while sinful and evil things often occur in warfare, war as a category is not evil in itself. Disease as a category is not evil, though it may be divine punishment for sin, human good, and evil. So we must learn to distinguish. I was uh, first got to thinking about this when in a conversation with my son, we were talking about World War I and how a very honorable and noble generation died and how magnificently they died. And uh, Bobby mentioned the fact that uh, people are always talking about the horrors of World War I, but they never stop to li listen or note or even speak about the magnificence with which people died on both sides. That was a magnificent generation in Western Europe that died in World War I. And yet people are so busy talking about the horrors of war, they never think about the magnificence, the integrity, the honor, the greatness of those who were on the battlefield. They forget about the people and in their involvement with the horrors of war. Now war is horrible, but by the same token, so is marriage. <laughs> and yet we don't talk about marriage as if somehow uh, this was a terrible evil. Evil people get married and have evil times, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with marriage. Just because a lot of marriages are bad doesn't mean that marriage is wrong. It means the people are wrong. And the same thing is true about war. War isn't bad in itself. A lot of things, bad things happen in war. And cowards, and there seem to be a lot of cowards in America today, and cowards hate war for one reason. They might personally get hurt. But no one ever thinks of the principle that under the laws of divine establishment, all freedom that we enjoy to fail or succeed, all that freedom comes through military victory. And honorable, noble, and fine people died on many battlefields so that hippies, jackasses, scum, and a lot of other people can...